G'day everybody, we've got a SD card in for data recovery. This one's been bent, you can see this little bend line across here. I'm looking at the top side to see what little trace wires are being damaged. It seems okay on the top. And if we have a look on the back, you can see the crack has done a lot more damage. It's broken through a lot of these little trace wires up here. So we've got to find out which ones are damaged and how we're going to repair it to get the data off it. So let's bring up a pinout description of the SD card. This is one I've made and if you want it, you can also get a link to it in the description. I'm going to put the multimeter in a beep mode. And we're going to check each pin. We'll start left to right and we'll see which pins are working and not. So far left is pin number 9. This is the data number 2 pin and we've got some test points. So. I think that one should be okay. You can see the little via hole where it uh, goes through to the actual controller chip. Then we start at pin number one. This is the card detect pin and also gets used for data number three. So there it's not connected, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. That test point, I have no idea why they have two test points when you've got one here. It looks like the via hole that connects it to the controllers there but I don't understand why they got this test point. So I'm going to assume for now that it, this pin connects to the via hole and goes to the controller and everything should be okay. Now pin number two is command. So command traces down to here and it looks like it's broken. So that will need to be repaired. So here we can check both ground pins. They are talking to each other. Are they talking to the rest of the board? We'll have to flip it. The next pin here is the clock pin and you can see the little trace wire come down here. It looks okay but there's no test point for me to check that. Now we've got data zero. This one's important. We can still read the SD protocol with just data zero. So it must work. And if we follow it down, we've got the via to there. That test point don't work. So, and it also crosses to the other side. That must be important, otherwise why would they do it? So I'd say this little crack is just here. We'll need to pull that back and possibly repair that. Uh, and the last pin, where does it go? To this test point. There's a crack there, so I'm not sure it's getting through to the controller. I think we'll have to do that little repair there as well. So we scratch back this and I'll solder it back together. Clean that back a little bit. So let's do a continuity test, see if this works. So here to here, that's working. As I said, I'm not sure I need that, but may as well do it. We'll do all of them. So again, this pin in here, it's not working, but if I push down on it a bit, the crack joins and it works. So we'll fix it as well. Check that soldering worked okay, just want to be very delicate. We did, even though it's flexing, it's working. So I've gone along this fault line here and I've scratched back three more trace wires that I think need to be repaired. So I'll do them all at once. So I've checked all the repairs and I think I've completed it. Wouldn't it be nice if it's gonna work now? Let's have a look. So here's what the setup looks like in the reader. I've got two little copper wires soldered to the power and the ground 
and I'm gonna use a spider board to directly connect to the SD protocol that just gives me far more power I can get manufacturers ID and I can get some more debugging and diagnostic information if I read it this way it's also safer to do it this way than trying to jam it back into a consumer level SD card reader we have the SD card detecting now in my special reader I don't know anything about this SD card because it was mailed in and it didn't include the label but we do have a digital ID which is hex 74 now if you go to my website I do collect these and I figure out what the brands are so if you need a link to my table I'll, I'll leave a link to my website there so it looks like we've got access to the data as well it detects as a FAT32 with a EOS digital that is I think Canon EOS is what Canon brands and we've got the common camera folder names DCIM and MISC and we do we've got a Canon camera and we've got access to all the photos again so luckily that's good news uh, if you're new to the channel welcome along I do regular data recovery videos I hope you subscribe and I will see you again in the next video